Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Ben Hodges, and, and this is the BH Drum Pod. Thanks very much for coming back. Uh, presented by bhmacademy.com, of course. Can't forget to mention the website. Um, today, we are talking about the left hand. Uh, and this is actually a common problem for lots of right-handed drummers. And of course, if you are a left-handed drummer, uh, you may be experiencing problems with the right hand. Basically, it's the hand that you are not dominant in. We all know that we we prefer a certain hand when we throw a ball or pick up a pen or pencil and write on a piece of paper or as we even brush our teeth with what hand we hold the toothbrush in. We often always have a comfortable hand and we identify ourselves as right-handed or left-handed. And in drums, this be can begin a series of problems um, when we're trying to get better at the drums. Um, often we choose one hand to do all of our movements with on the drum over our other hand. So if you think about it, for a typical rock drum beat where it's we're hitting the hi-hat cymbal four times and we're hitting our snare drum only one time, well, the right hand that is hitting the hi-hat gets four hits and the left hand that hits the snare drum only gets one. So the right hand automatically already has four extra practices than the left hand. And this can cause a big, huge difference between how our right hand moves and our left hand moves. I know as a drummer, when I was learning the drums, I really struggle with my left hand and I couldn't really get it to match what my right hand was always doing. I always felt like my right hand was able to go faster and able to do better technique than my left hand was. So if I wanted to do a drum roll on the snare drum or perform a very fast fill, I always feel like my left hand always fell behind just a little bit and it would make my playing not feel and not sound as great. So today, what I want to talk about is how do you fix it? How do you fix that stupid left hand of yours or the uh, the non-dominant hand? If in case you're left-handed or you're an open kit player, um, you uh, this might be the opposite hand. Um, lots of people think that the one way to get better at the left hand or is to switch up how things are set up on your drums. You might take like the whole drum kit and flip it all around to the other side. So like you're practicing like completely opposite handed. So meaning um, maybe instead of your hi hats on your left side of your drum kit, you flip everything around like a mirror image and put it on your right side and try and do everything opposite handed. I've seen people try that. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing that only because it's changing a lot of for your body all at once. And it's really hard to adapt to something very, very different in terms of setup or of equipment on your drums. So we don't have to set anything up different physically on our drums. We should just keep our drums set up in the exact same way. Um, so that's not the answer here. Today, what I've come up with is four little things that you can do to help fix that left-handed uh, faux pas or um, I guess silliness that happens with, with drumming. Um, so number one is to do some daily tasks with the left hand more often. Have you ever tried to brush your teeth with putting the toothbrush in your opposite hand? If you never have, I suggest you try it. <laughs> it feels very weird and almost like you don't really know what's going on. I, I try to do this more often um, now that I've um, acknowledged my left hand is a little weaker than my right and I'm getting a lot better a lot better at it, but it is definitely certainly weird the first couple times that it's happened. Um, doing things like combing your hair or shaving or um, picking up and throwing a ball with the opposite hand are little daily things that you can do to strengthen the left hand, to give it more practice. Because remember, our right hand is the one and our dominant hand is the one that gets the most practice because our brain has told us that it's the most comfortable. And so we are trying to be a little uncomfortable on purpose so that our brain can figure out what muscles to flex and relax and contract and, and, and 
to make work are in our left side. And we want to be able to create those programs in our brain so that it becomes a little easier each and every time. So doing some simple daily tasks with your left hand or the non-dominant hand more often can really, really help. Um, consider even another simple idea. It's when you're doing something that you can do with one hand, perhaps put your dominant hand in your pocket and let the left hand do all the work. Have you ever tried to set a drum kit up with only your left hand? It's possible. It's something that you can practice with. So doing some simple daily tasks with your left hand can be a great way to kind of strengthen up that left hand and get it some more practice that it needs. Number two is emphasizing your hand technique with the left hand or the non-dominant hand. Now, this is extremely important because whatever the right side does, it does it very well because it's had lots of practice and your left hand has not had that much practice. I remember when I was First, I acknowledge this problem that I have been having with my left hand. And I play a match grip, which means that um, both of my drumsticks are held the exact same way in both my right and my left. And there's the other style is traditional grip. Um, but I, I, I use match grip. And um, I noticed the way that my right hand held the drumstick um, was comfortable and it was correct. But my left hand didn't seem to feel right or fit right. And I noticed how my left hand was not holding the drumstick uh, as well as my right hand was. So I had to really teach myself and remind myself and just constantly correct my left hand hand technique. I noticed that the motion that my drumstick was making as I was hitting a practice pad or as I was hitting the snare drum or a, or a, a drum itself was in a correct fashion, but my left hand was almost in, in some kind of a scooping or sideways motion. And it just, it, it taught me that I was, I was moving my left hand with like a palm in or palm up kind of method as I was hitting it towards the drum. So I had to reinforce like moving my, uh, flipping my palms facing down towards the drum the drum. And it just kind of basically emphasized that my hand technique was very different from my left side to my right side. So as you are drumming, whether it's on a practice pad or on a snare drum or just one drum in particular, I would highly recommend that you look at how your hands move as you hit the drums. Um, do they match each other? Do they have the same range of motion? Are they holding the drumstick in the same fashion? Do they have both the same amount of, of tension or relaxation within your hands and your wrists? Because you don't want to be tensed up when you're holding those drumsticks. You want to be nice and relaxed. So these are some things that um, you should think about um, as you're trying to figure out what is going on with the non-dominant hand. So if you notice any small differences or notice any differences between your right and your left, um, I suggest to really try and correct those. One way you can do this is just focus on one hand at a time. Do a simple exercise like, for example, um, a single stroke roll or a double stroke roll on a practice pad and remove one hand away from the drum pad. And like maybe the instead of both drumsticks hitting the practice pad, maybe one is hitting the practice pad and the other one's hitting your leg on the side. And just focus on what is the drumstick doing or what is your hand doing. And, re, and do flip hands and do on both sides and compare the two. See which one is different and I'm just trying to figure out why is it different. Okay, look at your hand technique, look at how your fingers, where your fingers are in the drumstick. Think about the motion of the drumstick and whether you're using your fingers or using your wrists or what, what direction your palms are facing. Um, all of those things are important with your hand technique. And hand technique is a big topic in itself. Um, so there is lots of great resources of how hand technique should be. And in fact, I have one on my uh, website right now, BH Drum Academy, um, and you can find out um, just the different types of grips and what it should look like. Now, moving on to number three, number three, how do I fix that left hand is do one handed exercises to give it more practices. Work that hand often and work it first. Now, what that means is 
is you will actually do exercises where you're only using one hand. Um, so for example, maybe you try to get and perfect the stroke motion of the left hand by practicing on a practice pad um, and try to give that hand physically more practice than your dominant hand. We know that your dominant hand gets a lot more practice than your left hand. That is every beat you play, you know it's being hit at least four times more than the left hand is if you're playing four, four time, of course. And we want to be able to give that left hand some more practice. So what you could do is work on your hand technique just using one hand at a time. Perhaps you spend a whole 10 minutes on one-handed types of movements, or maybe you spend 15 minutes on one-handed movements and make that part of your practice. Do one-handed exercises to give it lots more practice. And of course, you're always doing that with good form. And lastly, the last suggestion how we can fix that stupid left hand is to do left-handed lead exercises. Now, what is a left-handed lead exercise? A left-handed lead exercise means it's at any exercise, like a rudiment or a drum beat or anything like that, but your left hand is the first hit. So, for example, um, when you are doing a rudiment, for example, where it's just a sticking or a, a, a basic pattern, that's what a rudiment is. Let's say you're, doing, you're working on your practice pad and you're working on um, the paradiddle. Now, paradiddle is right, left, right, right, and then it flips and it goes left, right, left, left. Now, the first hit in this, what I just said, was right because it was right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. But instead, a left-handed lead exercise would basically flip that over. So on beat one, you would actually start with the left. You would go left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. So... So you could also do the same thing with a singles stroke roll. So instead of right, left, right, left, you could flip it and start the beat on beat one with left, right, left, right. A double, you could start with right, right, left, left, or you can start with left, left, right, right. So you see how the beat one, I changed it into starting with the left hand first. And what this is teaching me is to be comfortable with starting certain fills or starting movements with the left hand, because this is something that often happens, whether your your whole body is leaning, is looking at the right side of the drum kit or the left side of the drum kit. You want to be familiar and comfortable with all types of scenarios. So for example, how you're going to be able to uh, put a left hand on the left side of the drum kit versus the left hand on the right side of the drum kit, your body might get all twisted up. So you want to be able to practice left-handed lead exercises so that your body can make automatically these decisions that make it feel comfortable and make things smooth over. So left-handed lead exercises are a great way for you to learn how to use your left hand more often and to get your body to feel more comfortable with your left hand. So to summarize, um, how do we fix that left hand or that non-dominant hand that we're working with? Well, remember that we could do some daily tasks with that left hand. Maybe it's brushing your teeth or combing your hair or picking up a pen or pencil and writing with it. Uh, try to do some daily tasks with your left hand more often. Emphasize that hand technique with the left hand. Really analyze it. Take a second, slow things down and figure out what is your hand doing with the drumstick and how is it moving? Uh, do some one-handed exercises to give that left hand more practice. Work that hand often and first if you can. Do it right as part of your warm-up even. Try to get that left hand working a little bit to, up to speed with your right hand. And practice some of those left hand lead exercises. We're trying to do your left hand first when you're doing some certain exercises or rudiments or drum patterns and so on. And really get some good uh, practice with starting things with your left hand instead of always your right hand, which is always generally what your body is going to choose automatically because you are right-handed or left or whatever it might be. So try to get comfortable with the uncomfortable by giving it some practice. That's how you fix that stupid left hand and how you fix it. Now, if you need some exercises to work on, please reach out to me at bhdrumacademy.com. You can email me at bhdrumacademy at outlook.com. 
outlook.com. That's BH Drum Academy at outlook.com. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook and all the links there are attached to this episode of this podcast. Um, but feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to write out some, uh, some cool exercises for you that really, really help or show you what I do uh, or want to review your hand technique. Have a look around that website. There's lots of great answers and resources there for you automatically that exist. And I'm always happy to meet new drummers and new people. So reach out. I love to have a chat with you. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and hope this really helps with your left hand. Uh, and until next time, folks, go practice. See you soon.